So our project was a college basketball win prediction model. Um, and this project was done by Nishant Shah, who is my partner, and then me, Ishan Patel. So data description, we use data from the 2013 all the way through the 2019 NCAA men's basketball seasons. Our model will predict the number of wins a team will have based off of certain of a uh, certain number of their statistics. And this is data visualization. So these are our eight parameters and the X axis is the number of wins that teams had. And then the uh, Y axis is the parameter, whether it be effective field goal percentage or free throw rate. And these are our eight parameters. Um, so these are the variables and per or parameters that we used. We had the effective field goal uh, percentage of shot, or effective field goal percentage shot by a team, the effective field goal percentage allowed by a team, the turnover percentage allowed by a team, the turnover percentage committed by a team, the offensive rebound rate and the defensive rebound rate of a team, and then the free throw rate allowed and then the free throw rate of a team. And this is our process roadmap. So the first step for us was data processing. We normalized our features to fit a standard distribution. At first, we used half of our data as training data and the other half as uh, testing data. We re later realized that to increase um, the model's accuracy, we would actually have to increase the amount of training data that we used. So as a result of that realization, we increased the amount of training data to roughly three fourths of our total data. So we created two models, um, a linear regression model and a dense layer neural network model. Our linear uh, regression model proved eventually to be a more accurate model. And the way we evaluated our models was uh, using the mean squared error and the mean absolute error. And the way we tested our models is we took out 25% of the Kaggle data set and used it um, for testing purposes. Okay, so um, before I get into the performance, uh, we just wanted to show you guys our notebook and kind of just walk through what we did. So um, obviously this part is just importing the libraries that we used. And then over here, you can we used pandas to read in the CSV and create our data frames and define the training and test data. And then in terms of data processing, at first we tried to um, normalize the features and rescale our target, but we realized we didn't really need to rescale the target because it was just integer numbers of wins. So we didn't end up using uh, that part. And then, so the two models we had, uh, the first one was the linear regression model, which I'll run right now. And, um, this was the neural network model. So you can see how they, uh, the difference between both of them, obviously that the neural network has uh, more layers and more neurons, whereas this one is just a single layer with an input of eight features. And then, so this is our code and you can see it run. And then this is how we evaluated it using both uh, mean absolute error and mean squared error. And then in terms of our performance, these were the results we had. So something interesting that we noticed was that 50, like when we increased the number of epochs from, from 10 to 25 to 50, we actually noticed that the performance decreased. So for that reason, that's why we stuck to just using 10 epochs because um, the error uh, or the, the, the loss was actually less when we had less epochs. And then these are the different models that we tried out and the results that we got. So as you can see, the, the basic linear regression model actually got the lowest mean absolute error, and this was 2.4. So what this would mean is that we're actually predicting how many wins a team will have throughout the whole season to plus or minus two wins, which we thought was a pretty good result. Um, so like I said, uh, our conclusion was that the linear regression model um, performed the best and the MAE was 
209. This was a little bit better than the one of our neural network models, which had also had a MAE in the 2.5 range. So it wasn't that much different. But what this experiment um, showed us was that um, the, the number of turnovers, free throws, rebounding, and field goals all had a strong linear relationship with the, the number of wins that each team had. Yeah, and that, that's, that's our project. Cool, awesome. Good job, guys. Good job. Uh, yeah, please leave the screen on. Uh, any questions? Question? Uh, right. Do you see them out loud or? Sorry, could you repeat that? Do you see them in the chat or do we just say them out loud? Oh, just say out loud. <clears throat> uh, just wondering, when do you, when is the model taken into effect? Before March Madness or before a season? There's like multiple questions. Um, so this model just takes place um, before the whole season. I, I actually... So the stats are, used, are from the season prior, right? Yeah, so the data that we used was from uh, a bunch of seasons prior. Um, and if you... But this, this like same concept could still be used, obviously, to predict like... Um, no, I'm, yeah, I was just saying because if you're predicting a team's success over the, on, based on the success of the team the year prior, wouldn't that leave out the major factor that is team t roster turnover? Like, you know, seniors leaving, people getting drafted. Right, but it's, um, yeah, so that is one limitation of it, but it was still um, somewhat accurate in predicting, like, the, the number of wins uh, because just... I guess it's similar still because of coaching and obviously not gonna have that many seniors every time. So it, there's obviously a little bit of variability due to that. So that's one limitation. And also considering that really, if there's any really good players on a team, they're definitely gonna get drafted. Yeah, that, that's one limitation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, experience. 